thank you everybody. Uh, it's very good for me to be here tonight and uh, have a deep love and appreciation for all the work that uh, Speaking Down Bears has been doing. Uh, this particular piece that I'm going to share with you guys, uh, I wrote about a year and a half ago. I was working on a project, a uh, musical project, uh, that I wanted to take a lot of the events and issues and ideologies from a time during the 60s and 70s when a lot of people in the black community were really fighting and organizing and marching and uh, rebelling for their equality and for freedom. And this piece is called Black Owned. I wanted to channel a lot of those experiences uh, through my own as a 26, 27 year old young man, black man in the South at that time. Uh, owning myself, my emotions, my goals, everything about myself. And so that's what I'm going to share with you guys tonight. I've got pain in my bones, blood stains on my clothes, four gold chains on, and I don't work for you. I've got pollution in my food, revolution in my blues, executions on the news, and I've got work to do. I've got a bag full of soul and I own that. I've got a swag in my scroll I can't hold back. This isn't Moses in the desert, it's the chosen under pressure, this letters to my oppressor, I don't work for you. King chiseled in my teeth, I put a letter on each. That's four fronts when I stunt, I call it freedom of speech. I'm bigger than black, I'm opaque, this mosaic that I make stems from our roots and is sparking. The liberation of the dark colored artist, Hebrew art architect, the first men, so Ferguson, St. Louis arcs all connect the puzzle pieces. When the codes crack, the struggle ceases. This is for country souls, city folks and gutters sleeping. This is anti-colonialism, passion, I'm over the system trappings. This homie is never passive, it's lonely and rebel factions can't hold me, I own the masters. They're cold in the broken chapters, there's fire in my soul and I'm flowing like hydrofluoric acid. They show their panic towards a brother like me. I came explicitly to challenge history like Ben Franklin delivering electricity with kites and a key. Cause I've got pain in my bones, blood stains on my clothes, four gold chains on and I don't work for you. I've got pollution in my food, revolution in my blues, executions on the news, I've got work to do. I got a bag full of soul, and I own that. I got a swag in my scroll I can't hold back. This isn't Moses in the desert, it's the chosen under pressure. It's letters to my oppressor. I don't work for you. Pain chiseled in my teeth, I put a letter on each. It's four fronts when I stunt, I call it freedom of speech. They aim guns in a mass, I'm criminal to police. My flesh burnt brass like John described Jesus. Don't miss this. I'm more crispest than white Christmas. The birth of a nation that laid with a slave mistress. How can I honor founding father's logic? It ain't understandable. The system honor cops to slaughter our fathers like animals, but we're the ratchets. Black berets and leather jackets to fight the white knights, Southern Baptist slave masters. Forget the magazine articles appropriating particles of melanated queens to make your own dreams possible. If you tend to look like her, but don't elevate her image, you see, I see heaven in her melanin. No, you see his niggas. Thank God I brought that pain to the booth and not to a coop. Cause the pulpit couldn't simmer my wrath for the guilty culprits. Cause I've got pain in my bones, blood stains on my clothes, four gold chains on and I don't work for you. I've got pollution in my food, revolution in my blues, executions on the news. I've got work to do. I got a bag full of soul and I own that. I've got a swag in my stroll I can't hold back. This isn't Moses in the desert, this is the chosen under pressure, this letters to my oppressor, I don't work for you. Thug, chiseled in my teeth, I put a letter on each, four fronts when I stunt, I call it freedom of speech. While black groups were burying N-words in coffins, black youth got popped by those roll cops too often. Now every time another itchy trigger start unloading clips, another soldier slips and I can feel the frozen fingertips. See, this is bigger than politics. I'm sorry for not infusing my music with follies or popular hobbies of some college kids I'm torn apart. To me a shot in the park. Under the lights of day they don't wait until after dark. I don't creep or sneak this, I speak for speechless. Every seed that I bleed, believe it feeds the resistance. Every seed that I need, I pray it be, I receive such. Every word is a herb and they're killing trees to deceive us. 
I have no love for the black Ben Carson type leaders, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, all white Jesus. Because I've got pain in my bones, blood stains in my clothes, four gold chains on, and I don't work for you. I've got pollution in my food, revolution in my blues, executions on the news. I got work to do. I've got a bag full of soul and I own that. I've got a swag in my stroll that I can't hold back. I'm not Moses in the desert. I'm the chosen under pressure. This letter is for my oppressor. I do not work for you. Thank you. Give Benjamin a start of a round of applause. Does anybody have a question that they would like to ask him about the poem that he's just offered us? Any questions? It's, it's not a question, it's more so. Um, I want you to elaborate on those references that you made because, um, for example, when you said the poison in our food, I don't think people really understand where you're coming with that or, or uh, the reference to Jesus or, or the color of his skin. So just elaborate on some of those references. Um, I guess uh, about the food, it's just, you know, everything we, so much of what's consumed now is processed, uh, and I'm just one who has been enlightened within the last few years about the importance of, you know, what we put into our bodies. We really are what we eat, and I understand the need for preservatives and things like that because, you know, we live in a world where you have to sell food, and people have to buy food, and in order for people to buy food and people to make food, and for people who make food to make money, food has to last. The shelf life of food has to be very long, so, you know, uh, things are put into food. When you look in the back of boxes, whether it's cereal or drinks, everything has some type of chemicals in it to, you know, make it last, but nobody really ever, I guess, puts a lot of thought into what these things are doing to our bodies, not just our bodies, but our emotional state, our spiritual state, our physical state. Um, so when I say things like I've got pollution in my food, it's... I mean, there's really debates right now about whether or not we should be able to label GMOs on food, whether it, food should have labels, letting people know that it's, they're genetically modified food. So that I'm, I, I'm a staunch believer in that things like that, just the way we consume food, how much meat we consume, how much, you know, processed food that we consume, it has an effect on our spiritual state, our, our awareness, you know, our connection with uh, God because it's not so much of a natural thing being so mass produced. Um, the references, I mean, it's just my blackness, you know, and, 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 and the beauty of people of color, you know, sometimes we take for granted, uh, we come from small towns or small cities and small states in a small country compared to how big the world is. And people of color, black people and people of color, we're the minority in the United States, but we are largely the majority worldwide, people of color. And sometimes coming from a small place, within a small place, within another small place, uh, you can lose sight of that big picture. And I'm looking at, um, for example, the reference of Jesus, I mean, he would be a, a Middle Eastern man, you know, um, coming from where he came from in the era that he came from that place. I mean, you, you can gather around many people who've done these studies and they can give you an image of how he looks. But when I look around, especially growing up in the South, I don't see an accurate representation of Jesus if we must have a representation of him at all. I don't see an accurate representation and there's danger in that. There has been danger in that for me personally. Uh, I remember at the age of 20, someone asked me a question that kind of rocked me when they told me to close my eyes and envision God. And, and when I did, they asked me to tell them what I saw. And I saw, closed my eyes and I saw a white man. I 
was a 20 year old young black man and I thought the image I saw when I closed my eyes when I imagined God was a white man. That immediately, in my opinion, informed how I saw the world in a lot of ways, subconsciously and consciously, being that I'm not, I don't look like the God that I believe is all powerful and almighty at the time. So I think um, when you live in a world where, you know, things can be exploited, and not only things and systems can be used to exploit people who do not have as much power or as much knowledge or uh, as much awareness, as much connection, you know, to their spiritual selves, that you can uh, take these things and use it for a very sinister purpose. So a lot of those references just reinforce enlightenment that I've uh, gained over the last few years. One more question. Um, I always ask them if any questions, so I don't need a mic. Uh, speak about, um, if there is one, the burden. I, I, I heard in your lyrics you spoke about, excuse me why I don't speak about college and the follies. Like why, uh, why this route? Why, why speak about these things when it, the industry is definitely more profitable to speak about other things that that are joyous and yada, yada, yada. So what about the burden of saying, okay, I'm gonna tailor my art to this, if there is a burden? I mean, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul, you know? So, music-wise, you know, I believe in my talents. I know I'm talented. I know what I'm able to do writing records, especially in the realm of hip-hop. Um, and yeah, it's profitable if you can make people dance, you can make people move, you can make people, you know, feel good and want to party and want to, you know, be merry and stuff like that. It's, it's very, it could be very profitable. Um, it could be profitable in other ways as well, but I just feel like my experiences and my understanding of my existence informs my art. So selfishly even, I create music to make myself feel good. It's therapeutic for me to express things I've been through. Uh, a person I'm trying to aspire to be, and I can understand that lots of young men and women um, who may look like me, um, who may not look like me even, have gone through similar things, or at the least they can take uh, obstacles that I'm talking about and uh, use it to, uh, you know, maybe motivate themselves or point them in the right direction that you don't always have to follow the trend, you can buck the trend as long as you have confidence in self and, and a connection to your, you know, your spiritual self, then you can, you can heal people, you can help people, you can be a light. Thank you.